And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. This ship in the midst of the sea is an emblem of the church in the midst of the world. Jesus is there with his disciples. This is our comfort. Whoever has this truth present to his mind looks upon everything which happens in the church with other eyes than those of the world. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. We ought to expect to meet with temp tempests in the church, and to see it covered with waves. Let us not be scandalized at it, but let us arm ourselves with faith and patience. Every one has likewise his storms and tempests. When our faith grows dull and heavy, when Christ is asleep in us, he is asleep in respect of us, when he leaves us some time to ourselves and makes us know the want of him by permitting us to fall either under temptation, or inward troubles, or outward persecution of carnal men, or into coldness, difficulties, and disgust in the service of God. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. The advantage of temptation is to make us know our weakness, so as to oblige us to have recourse to God and to unite ourselves to Christ. We approach him by faith, we are united to him by charity, and we awake him by prayer. All good perishes or at least decays in us without Christ. There is not so much as one moment wherein we are not in danger of perishing without our Savior's grace. How proper is this short prayer for us, and how familiar should it be to us, because our Savior's grace is necessary every moment. It comprehends all the power of our Lord's grace, the abundance of our Savior's merits, and the depth of the sinner's miseries. And he saith unto them, why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Faith is courageous, incredulity is fearful. A person truly faithful retains his confidence in the most violent temptations. One word alone of God restores a perfect calm to souls troubled by temptation. Prayer, though imperfect, is very often heard. First, that our imperfections may not hinder us from praying to God. Second, that we may be persuaded that our merits do not make our prayers effectual. Third, that we may offer them up with great humility. And fourth, that we may unite ourselves to Christ in praying together with him. This defect of faith in Christ's disciples consists in their not having that idea of his power which they ought. Let us fear the same defect, and let us learn of how much use it is in order to pray well, to have such a notion of grace as is suitable to the omnipotence of that God whom we adore. Great tempest, great calm. God proportions the comfort to the affliction. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Insensible creatures hear the Creator's voice and obey it. Man alone is deaf and disobedient thereto. God, who makes himself obeyed by them, can he have less command over our heart when he resolves to subject it to himself? This is the consolation of those who suffer, that he can make himself obeyed in a moment and restore peace to souls and to the church. Let us only awake our faith and pray.